This is one tough safe. Virtually indestructible, Sentry safes can withstand fire, water, and would-be thieves. We get letters and phone calls every single day from people who have nothing left but what was in that safe. More than half of the homes in America rely on safes. Tested to the point of destruction, Sentry safes are definitely up to the task. We can actually hoist them 30 feet in the air, drop them, and then put them into the fire test, just like might happen in your house if you had a fire. Sentry has a history of breaking the mold, and the big bolt lives up to its name with the largest bolts Sentry's ever made. Consumers told us is that they believe fervently that the bigger the bolts are, the greater protection they're going to get. In the past, they've been called coffers, strong boxes, and lock boxes. And Sentry safes have been around for more than 80 years, keeping a watch on valuables. This is a three-generation business, and we want to make sure that we continue to do the right things. Nothing's going to keep your valuables safe like a steel box. Truckloads of steel roll into the Sentry factory almost every day. First, the metal is pressed under 250 to 400 tons in a straightener. It goes through a strainer, gives it strange material up, takes any deformities out. Next, the components of the safe are punched out. Excess material gets trimmed so everything will fit together perfectly. These guys trim it on a can opener, basically. Just a big can opener. The two main elements of the safe are the body and the door. The body is made up of a front frame, back, and a jacket. The jacket is the outer shell of the safe that covers the frame. The jackets will go through a multi-stage bending operation. The bottom corners of the jacket are bent first, and then the top corners. Next, the parts of the body are sent down the line where the seams are welded. And the front frame has strap hinges that are also welded onto it, and that's where the door will be hung later in the process. The back and the front frame and the jacket are then fit together. They go through robotic welding, which is going to weld all of those seams and make sure that everything is fit together and welded and strong. That takes care of the main box. Meanwhile, the door is loaded with brackets that will be used later to attach it to the body. These are the brackets. Put them right in the slots, they're easy. Put them right the hinges. Then you just grab your door, put the two holes, place it down, and it's welded. If the brackets aren't put on right when the inner liner is added later, it will pop right off. So you got to make sure the welds are there. That's why you, when you flip it over, I'll make sure every bracket is in place, and then send it down. With the main assembly done, both the door and the body are sprayed with phosphate, which will help the powder coat to adhere evenly. The phosphate is actually going to adhere to the steel, and the powder coat is going to adhere to the phosphate layer. The next steps in the process will make the safes waterproof and fireproof. Waterproofing safes was a century innovation. The company has been making innovations since John Brush, a founding partner, started building safes in 1930. They were the first to use plastic interiors in their safes. John Brush's sons came up with the idea while using plastic bins to mold their insulation. They were looking for one thing and ended up with something else that transformed an industry. Sentry was also the first to use really effective insulation for fireproofing. It keeps the contents inside the safe cool if a fire outside is raging. To prepare the safes for the insulation, a sealer is applied to both the body and the door. We're going to be applying an adhesive hot melt, which is going to seal the units so that they do not leak when we fill them. It's a sealer, which is glue, melted to a certain degrees. Next, the body and door are filled with insulation in a secret operation. It's top secret. The insulation may be a mystery, but the principle is simple. It's all about the water held between the inside liner and the outer shell. So when the fire comes from the outside, it actually starts boiling the water inside the safe, and then that water keeps the temperature inside cool. Keeping the contents cool is especially important for digital storage, as it has little resistance to heat. So our temperatures stay below 250 degrees, which protects your paper documents and any of your digital documents that are in there. Then the door and the body continue separately down the assembly lines. Then they will be pulled out in the assembly end where they can be made into the safe. The big bolts and the mechanical lock mechanism are installed next. She puts in the big bolt, puts in all the bolts, 
get they basically the actual physical locking parts of the safe. Now that the big bolts and locking mechanism are in place, it's time for the lock. Many safes come with a standard three number dial combination, similar to what you might have had in your high school locker. The lock works with a series of three tumblers in the form of wheels that must be turned to a certain position in order to release the door. After the lock is installed, a gasket is fit around the outside of the door. When you latch that door, it latches the seal and there's a space created so there's no water can seep in throughout the door. The added benefit of the gasket is that it makes it more fire resistant as well. One thing is it makes it water resistant, and secondly, it helps with the fireproofing, it helps keep the air out. Next, the door is attached to the body and a hydraulic press pushes in hinge pins. With the safe complete, it's time for the ultimate crash test. We can actually hoist them 30 feet in the air, drop them, put them into the fire test to make sure they pass fire testing. Super solid and tough as nails, Sentry safes foil fire, water, and thieves. You see a testimonial letter come in and someone says, hey, because of what you guys made, I can begin again because my, my stuff was saved.